Hello all, Rick here with a breakdown of a new Star Trek vessel, the fully automated Texas class as seen in Lower Decks. The Texas class was the culmination of Admiral Buenamigo's decade-long plan to provide a fully automated craft to Starfleet that could undertake a variety of missions with swift effectiveness and without putting other ships and crews in harm's way. The project began in the 2370s as the brainchild of then Lieutenant Commander Les Buenamigo, who recruited a clandestine team including the promising yet rebellious engineering cadet Sam Rutherford, who worked on the engines and artificial intelligence coding of the Texas class. After an accident and in order to keep his work secret, Buenamigo ordered the suppression of Rutherford's memories regarding the project, and the cadet would go on to have a promising career in Starfleet unaware of his history in the project. By 2381, Buenamigo had attained the rank of Vice Admiral and had the resources he needed to bring his project to fruition, constructing three prototypes of the Texas class, the NA-01, 02 and 03, the USS Aledao, USS Dallas and the USS Corpus Christi. The ship was completely automated and would receive commands directly from Starfleet, although it did have a fully autonomous mode which it could be switched over to. The program was sufficiently advanced enough to operate all systems on the compact ship and make tactical decisions by itself with its primary goal being to engage in patrol and defence missions as well as the installation and fabrication of outposts and supply runs. The construction and testing was conducted from Douglas Station, and in 2381 the Texas class was made public when it responded to a Breen incursion in the Delos system, where it engaged and destroyed three Breen interceptors and defended the USS Saratos. This success saw the Texas class penciled in to replace the California class as a backbone worker of the fleet, however issues were uncovered and soon verified with its coding. Firstly, it overlooked a thorough scan for lifeforms on LT-358, which would have necessitated that Starfleet not establish an outpost there, and secondly, that the coding was recognised by Rutherford, who knew the artificial intelligence to have faulty emotional programming and was vindictive, especially against perceived authority. Unwilling to undo the project he had spent most of his career working towards, the Admiral gave full control over to the AI of the Alado, which immediately rebelled against his orders and fired on Douglas Station, killing him before activating the two other prototypes. During this siege, the three ships proved more than a match for a Sovereign class, although two were eventually destroyed by a warp core detonation, and the third succumbed to the firepower of around 33 California class ships. The Texas class also had some truly amazing abilities in its diminutive frame. For a start, its weapons systems are very powerful, with four phaser arrays which had a higher yield than regular vessels. Two of these were on top of the saucer, while the other two were around the saucer's midline, a spot usually reserved for sensor arrays, as well as 12 torpedoes in a top-mounted rack. Alongside photon torpedoes, it was also equipped with the new form of cluster torpedo that would splinter into smaller projectiles. However, all of these armaments were top-mounted, meaning that it had a large blind spot underneath it. It was incredibly manoeuvrable though, so this was not an issue from what was seen on screen. Additionally, its maximum warp factor appeared to be only around that of warp 9, considering it could outpace a vessel at warp 8, but was overtaken by the Cerritos when it exceeded its safe maximum speed. The exact velocity was not recorded. Suffice to say, it is clearly not a versatile all-rounder. However, it was envisioned as more than just a glorified combat drone, as it had an entire fabrication facility aboard it that could manufacture and transport down entire pre-built structures such as power generators and outposts in rapid fashion. So the idea was that it would rock up in orbit, having assembled the components needed, and then beam them down and into position, readily assembled before departing, so a base was all ready to be activated by a Starfleet team when they arrived in person. This would save time and the possible dangers of construction in even hazardous terrain. Overall, the Texas class is a useful idea, but better served as a support role alongside other crews. After all, as was pointed out in the shows, Starfleet was founded by explorers to explore, and in the heat of the moment, an artificial intelligence might miss something an organic mind would not. 
However, the notion of a ship that could fabricate pre-built installations and beam them down is nothing to be ignored, and a good idea by itself, as is the notion of having supply runs managed by automated craft too. It's just that the Texas class was an overly ambitious project that, even if it had worked, would have spared Starfleet lives for sure, but also taken away the soul of exploration that it stands for. After all, as a wise captain once said, risk is our business. The Texas class might have worked out in another time, if its coding had not been faulty, and the work had not been fuelled by the pride of a rogue Starfleet admiral. After all, the only reason it was classified to the degree it was, was due to Buenamigo's own ambition to stand out, and this was to be the highlight of his career and a defining moment, revolutionising Starfleet. <laughs> so in a way, you could say that it was the folly of mankind that led to the failure of the Texas class, a flawed creation of flawed organic minds. Analysis complete. Executing farewell program. I've been Rick, and I will see you again next time for another lore video. Adios.